I'll I'll do a bunch. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to Cracked Movie Club, the show where we do a book club, but for movies, which are like books but better. And I'm thankful that I had that first part memorized because I didn't even have my notes pulled up. I'm your host, Jordan Breeding, and I'm joined by my co-host Jesse, and also a guest, Carolyn. Hey, say hello. Welcome, hello. Carolyn. Oh, thank you for having me. I am honored and humbled to be here <laughs> yes right sure um you may you should be you may Good. recognize carolyn from one video that none of you watched that was insane um about <laughs> video games which you know sometimes works well on our channel and doesn't but also uh you might recognize holy crap it just it flew out of my head was the the ch dorkly cut Dorkly, yeah, Dorkly yeah. college humor, dropout, million screaming at screaming at you by your window. Right, I remember that. <laughs> yeah, Car Carolyn was a you were a, a cast member, right? College humor. That's and correct. And then you're also still doing some dropout stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, I work with dropout a lot. Super fun. I'm a reigning champion on several game shows there. I think <laughs> so. Right. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming and talking to us about what is technically a film. What is, a, oh. what is a movie? Thank should you. should also be mentioned, Carolyn is now writing video game stuff for Crack.com, which is affiliated with YouTube.com slash Crack, where you find yourselves now. Ooh, they are, a seamless plug. They are partners in many things. <laughs> um, Indeed. I just uh, wrote an article about five ways you can protect your eye health as a gamer. So Ooh, sounds, I've done my good deed for the year. That sounds legitimately <laughs> uh, useful. For, yeah. Unlike most of our content. <laughs> um, well, cool. So we talked about Sonic. So I'm going to try and recap it. This is the second one. Jesse hasn't even seen the first one, apparently. Carolyn, have you seen the first? <laughs> I watched the first one because of this podcast. Oh, my gosh. Mm. Wow. And I have a lot of thoughts. I absolutely loved it. I'm all I'm all in. Okay. Wow. Okay. Well, great. This will be this will be interesting. So, Sonic Two begins uh, immediately. Well, a few months probably after the events of the first one, and I think I believe it's two hundred and sixty-five days. It says on the wiki. Oh, something like that. How do people know things, man? It's crazy. <laughs> I'm gonna do. I'm gonna butcher this recap because even as I'm about to say it, I'm I'm seeing a lot of snapshots, but I'm not remembering in what order they come. But the basic gist is that uh, Jim Carrey's Robotnik is uh, is stuck on a mushroom planet, which is where he was banished at the end of the last movie. He finds a way to escape using the help of Knuckles, who is also from the games, um, and together they partner to get the Chaos Emerald, which is a, it's essentially the Infinity Gauntlet, if I'm not mistaken. It's yeah. a combination of a bunch of different powerful little gems. Um, and then along the way, they are... Uh, they repeatedly are thwarted by Sonic, who also gets tails from the games, who just kind of shows up and is like, by the way, I exist. And who I thought was a female character for like 95% of the movie until mm -hmm. he calls him a little boy or something. I was like, oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. When are, when are they going to kiss? Yeah, well, because it feels very, I was like, how young is this girl thing that he's like very protective of? I mean, he could still be Sonic could be gay and creepy. It's you know we don't want to judge. They go they go out of their way to let you know that Sonic is a child, but a child who can drive and like fights the military and is voiced by like a <laughs> pushing has to be pushing forty year old man if I'm not mistaken. Gotta be pushing yeah. forty. Ben Ben Schwartzman. Yep. Uh, ben Schwartz. Schwartz. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Uh, things happen. There's an entire romantic comedy subplot that's just like wedged in the middle of the movie for about 30 minutes where there's like a wedding and they, Wild. they staged an entire wedding just to catch Sonic maybe, which doesn't make any sense. Oh yeah. Right. Wild. Uh, and, uh, you know, inevitably they get the chaos thing and they have a big fight and then Sonic becomes God. And then, um, he is not anymore. Um, but he wins <clears throat> and returns to a child. And I think that's the majority of it. Carolyn, why did we watch this movie other than I pushed us to? Why? why? That's, the big, that's the big reason, and I'm so glad you did. Good. This movie, this seminal film, I'm going to call it, <laughs> preceded by the first Sonic, is the greatest gay love story oh, okay, so of our time. I missed it. Okay. 
Oh, how how could you? You sweet <laughs> Jesse, you sweet fool. The let me tell you, I hadn't smoked weed for a while. And Weird when I <laughs> then I sat down to watch the first Sonic movie and smoked a joint with my father-in-law while watching it. And it let me tell you, I had the best time ever. Because the gay love story between Robotnik and Stone, his assistant, oh, is yeah. so hot. <laughs> when in the first movie, when Robotnik puts his gloved hand inside of his assistant's mouth and grabs his jaw, I gasped. <laughs> wow. Um... So hot. And then, uh, so I was all the way, I'm only watching this for Robotnik. I don't give a can we? Can I swear? Uh, yeah, how, as how long as we're we? past thirty yeah. seconds. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I don't give a flying cold shit about any of the other characters. <laughs> but Robotnik and Stone's love, like, and in the second one, I was so I was like, oh my god, are they even? Are they going to cut Stone out? Like, he was such an ancillary character. Then they brought him back, and they show him making the latte foam art with the hearts, and I was like, oh, it's explicitly gay now. I. <laughs> loved it they're so i i just loved it that's i want to be in a relationship like that uh well robotnik even or yeah robotnik made a uh stone like doll head while he was yes! trapped on the on the mushroom planet which yes! i didn't get that having not seen the first one i didn't realize why i thought it was funny because it was a rock and he named it stone instead of rock or whatever and then when they, when they introduced the handsome twink stone it started <laughs> Fall together Ooh, a, for me. A sleek and otter of a man. Of otter, yeah. That's. I can yeah. only imagine how much chest hair he has. <laughs> that's. And Robotnik loves it. He's probably got it like trimmed, just like Robotnik's mustache. <laughs> wow. Yeah, definitely. This is... I think uh, this. See, this is nuts that the Sonic franchise inspires fan art just implicitly. <laughs> I did. So I did a video uh, about. I did a Cannibal episode on Sonic as a franchise, the weirder things. Right. And it started, Sonic the Hedgehog started as fan art itself, himself. <gasps> really? The character was this, they sat down and, and Sega was like, we need some kind of character to rival Mario. So they were just like, what's gonna be like the most marketable thing ever? <laughs> they threw together, they were like, okay, Bart Simpson, um, a little <sighs> bit of Mario was in some of the original drawings. They even stuffed that like, his shoes are based on Michael Jackson's shoes from, from the Thriller music video, I think it is. But that's what's so funny is that like Sonic is known for fan fiction, all this like weird, grotesque pregnancy stuff. And it's so appropriate because he's always been uh, um, fan fiction and fan art. And so I love that. Like I want to see illustrated this love story that Carolyn, you are illuminating for me now. Um, I'm going to I'm going to hop in just for a brief second to say, by the way, if you're watching, um, if you have any questions, we're going to address them at the end. Like. What's your favorite gay relationship? Because there actually may be multiple now. Because that was not where I thought you were going. I thought you were going to talk about <laughs> Tails and Sonic. Because I also feel like they're just friends. Yeah, but they were like sleeping together, and <laughs> I mean, I know friends do that, but it just felt very. He was very. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, and uh, if you have any questions or anything, just throw them in the chat. We got Brian in there grabbing stuff, and then also we're gonna do alternate titles at the end. So if you have one. Throw it in there as well. Brian will grab it. We'll talk. We'll discuss whether it's worth discussing um, at the end. <laughs> but anyway, uh, okay. I That's think not where uh, I thought we were going to start. But let's let's. I think Sonic <laughs> and Tails doesn't feel romantic to me because you're right. They make it so clear that Sonic is this like young teen or maybe a tween. He's like kind of a badass dude. That's always been his thing. But he's young. Tails is. Even younger, a for child. sure. Yeah, a child genius. Mm -hmm. Right. Children but, can be gay okay, too, so... guys. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, but they can't kiss on screen. I would argue that all children are gay. <laughs> <laughs> Take it a step further. Yeah. That's what I say. Everyone's gay. It's Twenty-two, and everyone's gay. <laughs> um, this is I... the last generation. <laughs> 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 we um. I, so the the point about how old they are specifically makes me think i think that the way that sonics as a species 
hedgehogs or echidnas or foxes. I, I got a yes, I got a Jordan. real quick question on that before we get okay, too much further. Okay. Why why are Knuckles and Sonic not the same race? Like they seem to be pretty explicit that he's an echidna, Sonic is a hedgehog, but that's the same you're, word. You're thinking about this. You're thinking about this like a human. Oh, okay. okay? <laughs> you don't understand. These are alien beings. You need to expand your mind and get into the the multiverse. These are advanced species. Are they of sentient owls? And who knows what they're, you know, how they reproduce, what their genetics are like. I've got some ideas. <laughs> the internet's got a lot of ideas <laughs> if you want to know how they re reproduce. But I think because in the, they have a myriad, they have a different genetic system than we do, okay? Like, we're we're so binary. They're not like that. They're not like us. They're way more advanced. They can teleport using rings. We don't have that technology. We barely, we were struggling to get this Skype going. <laughs> We don't have that technology. <laughs> That's so. I think okay. they that they also <laughs> age differently because they make it very clear that uh, Sonic is a kid and that Fox is an even younger kid. And then, but then at the end, and they make it a point that like Knuckles is this like hardcore warrior, and at the end, he's like playing with the kids. <laughs> Right. He shouldn't he just be like drinking a beer with James Marsden if they <laughs> aged the same as us. But I think we're our our concepts of genders and and species and age is not applicable to them. So this is like the most yeah, progressive series of films maybe ever. Uh yes. in many ways. That's really yes. exciting. It's time to tear down the eight this this restrictive age of consent. <laughs> <laughs> clip it. Someone clip that. Uh <laughs> Well, okay, so just just real quick, to talk more about Tails and their part in this tale. Um, so nice, the dude. whole reason, they literally, this is why I thought it was kind of, if not gay, at least very much pushing, pushing into some sexual stuff, is like, I, I've been watching you for years, question mark, yeah. for a long time. And he's like, even I was in the shower, and he's like, Oh, yeah. Uh, no, but only because you don't take showers. Um, yeah. Other intimate moments of your life. Oh, I was right there. Um, <laughs> when you Sonic were. Sonic has lived his entire being in a panopticon of <laughs> tales making. It's like a it's like a Truman <laughs> Show scenario. Uh, he, yes. he feels like he has <sighs> the whole universe, but Tails is watching and maybe broadcasting. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and jump into that. Somebody just asked. Is Tails playing this movie? Uh, Bren Kelly said it. Did anyone think Tails was a... Ooh. Oh, wait. Nope. I misunderstood the question. Bren, you didn't ask that. But now I'm going to ask that. Is Tails <laughs> playing a Sonic game and just inserting themselves into it? That's my question. Love that shit. No. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Damn it. Okay. Well, I had to give it a shot. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know. Does it... Uh, okay, maybe it doesn't make sense. What what I really like, so this is reminding me of, <clears throat> I always had this theory that Pete and Pete, if you guys are familiar mm -hmm. with Pete and Pete, is, um, it's not just this sort of like fantastical series about childhood, it is, but it's actually literally being told by a kid, it's like stories being told to other kids by kids, yeah. um, almost like Are You Afraid of the Dark, you know, but, but we're just skipping the part around the campfire, and then I read somewhere that that was actually confirmed. That that's the whole thing is that's why it's so outlandish. And so I love the idea that maybe this movie that we're watching is just this omnipotent being, Tails, playing a video game. No, because I think a child telling a story has better story structure than this. A child, or maybe they don't, but a child wouldn't insert a 30-minute rom-com that has nothing to do with the rest of the movie. Okay, but they would insert a random 30-minute <laughs> dance break scene starring their favorite or, like, featuring their favorite song from eight years ago. Um, I, I, I think that was one of the things. So I, I appreciate that. Um, I believe, Jesse, you did enjoy this film. I actually like the first one a lot more. I don't know if you agree, mm -hmm. Carolyn. I think Jim Carrey's yeah, funnier. I, do agree. I feel like structurally it's like – a plot that's moving somewhere. This one had so many odd moments where they're like, you know, it'd be really funny if, if uh, Sonic danced um, and it 
hopefully won't be problematic that the country where they dance will invade another country at some point. But we're just gonna Yikes. we're just gonna hope that uh, Russians are still fun um, when we release this. <laughs> a notoriously fun people. <laughs> <laughs> it is funny to think. I I wonder if they uh you know they did the Red Dawn movie. Uh, they remade it, and in the original movie, the Russians attack America. But in the in the remake, Chinese uh China attacks America. But then Chinese censors or the government was like, uh, you can't do that. You're not going to be able to show it. So they just like CG'd all the flags North Korean or something. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. That's what I was kind of wondering at some point if they're like, we are from non-specific maybe not even real sort of eastern european country we are here to dance we have no affiliation with former ussr but no they're from uh they're from russia they're siberian it's pretty exciting but anyway there's just a lot of instances like maybe maybe they're not so bad yeah maybe we are okay we dance you thought we would fight but we are not fighters we are dancers um i think the thing it was like that scene the like well, he's dancing again, but with like the dog and like the eating junk food. There's just, and then again, the random rom com. There's just so much like they had about 20 minutes worth of an idea and they just like <laughs> here. Like it could have been like a half season of a Sonic show to some extent. Totally. Where the overarching plot is like, we got to get the chaos, whatever. But in the movie, it just feels like it's just freaking nonsense. <laughs> just the structure makes no sense to me. Absolutely. It is a fever dream of a movie. <laughs> it's just, but there's, I think the the reason, the biggest reason for me why the first one is better besides a full gloved hand going inside of Agent Stone's mouth, which is again, extremely hot, um, was there was so much more sonic bullet time in the first mm. one. Like those scenes where he's everything's super slow and we can feel how fast he is is like that's so fun right i wanted way more of that did not need any dancing <laughs> i also i love love the gymnastics that they go to that they go through in order to make them not touch like to make Sonic and like James Marsden like <laughs> never hug because the CG just looks like we don't the technology is wow. not there. It does not look good. <laughs> it looks even with the dog. It's like the shadows are weird yeah. and like it's not it's not great. And I just really loved the, like the fist bump thing and how they made that like part of the plot was so. Oh yeah. Because the kids don't give a shit. Like <laughs> why did they even do that? Who was that for? That's so. So funny. much. Of well, this you know movie what? Is, like, who is this for? I, so there were a couple of kids close to me in the theater when I was watching this. And I'm at, at the beginning, they were like pretty chatty. And I was like, oh, it's going to suck. But I actually got a good feel for like what was actually cool about this movie for kids. And they actually kind of liked the power bump. They were they like, yes, I guess they don't know the word dap yet. <laughs> I explained it to them after the <laughs> film. But <laughs> but like during the movie, they were like, oh, cool, like power bump. And they would power bump each other. And that was cool. You did that thing, yes. the uh, the stand up mom, where you went to the front of the theater and you were like, "All right, oh I got God. a couple of things I want to explain: <laughs> dapping, flossing." I'm, um, <laughs> I'm I'm sure you guys have played a game or two, but you don't know that deep canon like I do. <laughs> right? Have you guys seen a Sonic that's pregnant? Because uh, I got a few images. Throw them on the screen, Jeff. <laughs> um, I think one of the fun things too about that first movie with the bullet time stuff, I don't know if you thought about it this way, but uh, when he power slides under the bus and it explodes, that's like mm -hmm. 60 dead people. Um, it's a bus yes, in, many casualties. in transit in the middle of the day in San Francisco. That bus is full of people and they are all dead. And he's like, yeah, yeah gotta go fast. Have, have the courage to show the bodies on screen, at least, <laughs> Sega. That's what I'm saying. It just it... He's a child soldier and we need to show the realities of that. <laughs> we we surely do. Um yeah. So I I think there was the acting in this movie was fantastic from pretty much everybody. Mm -hmm. I thought did so great like say what you will about the wedding scenes but that actress what is her name who plays the bride i think yeah natasha rosh natasha rothwell is so funny like it's good for her for just like being so grounded and incredible in this 
in and I think that's a fault in the writing is the the some characters are so good and have such strong viewpoints and then James Marsden and the and his wife yeah Tika Sumter and James Marsden their characters are written so that they have no reaction or opinion to anything <laughs> right. that happens around them in the first movie I was shocked because James Marsden has no viewpoint about what's happening to him <laughs> at any time like it, I needed him to ask one question to Sonic like what are you <laughs> am I hallucinating like ha he did not freak out at all it's interesting that then kind of all the humans or at least the the two main humans are uh are just NPCs they serve no purpose except to usher Sonic into this weird adulthood. Are they playing yes. the game? Somebody's playing the game. We're going to find <laughs> it. Jim Carrey's playing the game. Um, I think you're getting to the a conspiracy theory that Sonic is actually part of the TSCU, the Truman Show Cinematic <laughs> Universe. Jim Carrey. Oh. oh, shit. Like Jim Carrey yeah. is playing Sonic while people watch Jim Carrey play Sonic. Oh, wow. Oh. Fuck. My God. Um, that's a delightful thought. I was going to say, uh, you said her name was Natasha Rothwell. She's in um, White Lotus, the the first season yes. of that. She's like the uh, masseuse or whatever. She's yeah. really great in that, too. So um, it is funny. I mean, even James Marsden. Marsden? Marsden? James? Jimmy. Jimmy's great <laughs> in everything that he's in, generally speaking. It is funny that they, they also, it's just such a weird miscast role where, like, uh, her beefcake husband is like, we're all jacked and strong, and he's like, yeah, me too. I'm yeah, so weak, he, and I'm like, dude, you're freaking yeah, jacked. Yeah, he's like a notorious action star. Yeah. Like, why are you? Yeah. Okay, so here's here's how I would fix, and this is also my pitch for Sonic Three. So I don't love that the only evil person is a scientist. That's not a message that kids <laughs> like. Cops are good. Scientists are bad. Sorry, fucking think again. That's not how the world works. <laughs> ACAB and scientists are good. I think we need to put more critical race theory into our math textbooks. <laughs> I agree. I totally into agree. Into our Sonic, yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, no, so man. I think in the third movie, they should have a good scientist in opposition to the evil scientist that is Dr. Robotnik. And, uh, and James Marsden should leave the police force. And we should have a bad cop <laughs> so they could have a yeah. shootout or something. <laughs> It'd be great. And then James they can Marsden kill a bus get... full of 60 people. And then they can kiss. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Now, now what, uh, again, to bring up the, the original Sonic canon, in the, in the official, okay, in the sort of official, there's the, uh, what was it called? The Sonic Bible, I guess that Sega of America uh -huh. wrote uh -huh. while they were waiting for Sega of Japan to like kind of figure out the actual canon. They had to, Sega of America had to start marketing. So they're like, screw this, we're writing our own thing. So the story that they came up with was that Robotnik was originally a good guy. He was this environmentalist. Um, he would he would collect like hurt animals and and recuperate them or whatever. And Sonic like accidentally burrowed into Robotnik's, oh, at the time his name was, um, Dr. Kintobor, which you may recognize as Robotnik backwards. Oh. So he burrows into Robotnik's little hideout thing where he's doing good crime, I guess. And um, they become best buds. Robotnik helps Sonic, like, become supersonic and get all his powers and stuff. But then there's, like, some rogue wave from the sun that messes around with some crystals. And that t suddenly turns Robotnik evil and, and his name reverses and shit somehow. But... That would be such a cool thing for the third movie is to do that in reverse. Make Robotnik become the good guy, and that's how the story or ends. Or just make it a oh. – well, I was going to say you can make it a prequel, but I guess we already have a Sonic origin. You guys, Sonic is too rad to be bad. <laughs> like, the, the, everything that Sonic does, he's skateboarding, he's snowboarding, he's got a quip, he's, he's stealing Oreos but still paying for them. He's he's <laughs> yeah. living the Oreo dream. Oreo fins, get out of here. I just yeah. love that they made a character that looks so insane when put next to a real person, and they're just like, this is your idealized childhood. Totally. Like, I mean, and that was all completely house, deliberate. 
I love that was all it. deliberate from the start. He had to be the raddest thing possible. And that's yeah. why they were like, Bart Simpson, he's in there. You know, uh, like, I forget the yeah. others that it was. I... But, but you're totally right, yeah. <laughs> I feel like one of the weirdest things about, I think this about Deadpool a little bit as well. I feel like he is a Deadpool-esque character where it's the sheer volume of quips that's supposed to carry the day. Loves to fuck. <laughs> yes, that as well. <laughs> Um, but just the sheer amount of one-liners that he says are insane because they're they're almost never funny. It's it's weird how yeah. often they don't land and they seem to be there because it was like written in the script, say joke. And like they usually don't have anything to do with anything. Uh, my favorite part is when Knuckles is like, you're still joking? Your jokes yeah. are terrible. And I was like, woo, Knuckles. <laughs> um, it just like... It's funny yeah, because it's non sequitur quips only. Yeah. It's it's interesting that Knuckles like it's it's funny that he phrased it in that way as opposed to, oh, you're continuing to to make jokes that I think are kind of funny, but it's not the time. He's like, No, your jokes suck. <laughs> and he's like, Yeah, but like, how about the 49ers? Because we live in California. Um Jordan, I feel like that might have been exhausted by this movie. <laughs> I am. And this is the thing is I, uh, I, I have two daughters and they're going to make me want to watch, or they're going to force me to watch things like this someday. But I have been pleasantly surprised so far with like frozen is great. I saw frozen. Yes. recently. <laughs> it's a great movie. There are lots of great kids movies and they're well-written yeah. and stuff. It's just fun. I just wish that Sonic like made some sense or was like a little <laughs> bit funny for me as an adult and not like the, the four little girls that were sitting in front of, it was like, there were five people in the theater. It was me. There was four little, uh, six, and there was a mom. They got up before it was over, and they're all standing by the door waiting <laughs> for it to end so that they can leave. <gasps> ooh, and, ooh. And I'm sitting there by myself with my hood up like, <laughs> no, I have a re- I'm doing this for work. <laughs> I have a reason to be here. <laughs> um, it was my, yeah, not the best. My my nie- I have a niece that's like approximately the age of your daughters, I think. She loved the first one. They haven't seen the second one yet, but um it was incredibly cute to ha- see her saying got to go fast for a long time. Carolyn, I don't know if you remember that weird off-brand Sonic gimp suit we used to have in the yes. college humor office. Of course. I used to pop that on and FaceTime <laughs> with her. She loved that thing. <laughs> oh my god. Uh but 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 I'm not totally sure why because there haven't been any good Sonic games. Not that my my niece isn't a gamer. My brother and I grew up absolutely loving Sonic, and that's why that got introduced to her family. But the kids that were in my theater, God knows why they like this stuff because they probably weren't like a Ben Schwartz fan. They probably haven't had a good Sonic game in their lifetime. I, so I don't been know. Told that it's for them. Yeah, I. They've seen, I'm sure, whatever they're watching their media on, they've been heavily marketed Sonic. Like, as as aware of as we are of it as adults, they are, like, tenfold getting hammered with Sonic marketing. I feel like, too, I, you know, it it is only, I mean, they, they use aspects of Sonic and, like, he goes fast and their characters and whatever. But in general, I wonder if this is sort of how video game movies could and should work anyway, which is... It doesn't freaking matter about, I mean, I, I don't know. I guess you can go either way with it because <laughs> people are going to get pissed about it. But like, I'm interested in the Halo show, which apparently sucks, but it, it's like not covering the plot at all. Um, it's mm-hmm. like its own thing. And I, it is interesting that every single interview with a video game director is like, yeah, I didn't, I don't play that shit. I don't care. Uh, like the Assassin's Creed director was like, I don't even know what an assassin is. Um, and terrible i don't know it's just like i think sonic could easily work if he was blue hedgehog fast man like i just don't see i don't think kids give a crap about him being sonic he just has a lot of things that would appeal to a kid anyway because he is blue and wears sneakers and looks makes quips yeah but now they can release now when they do make a new sonic game every kid will be playing it it's a good point you know it's an ouroboros of marketing and it's a delicious <laughs> cycle of capitalism. I've so that. The, mm, my tail tastes so good. <laughs> mm, the gimp suit comment made me uh, think about something that I have been has been keeping me up at night. <laughs> uh, is Sonic wearing gloves? Oh, 
He is I was wearing trying shoes. To figure that out. And socks. They're all wearing shoes for some reason. Is Sonic wearing gloves? Or I is think that his weird? Because if you look at them, they have like tubes almost on them. So I think it could be part of his flesh. I guys, I gotta know what Sonic feels like. How heavy is he? Because he doesn't feel hmm. like we're thinking flesh and bones and muscle and stuff. He doesn't have that. He's a being of energy beyond our comprehension. What does he feel like? How heavy is Sonic? I bet he's got hollow bones. I bet his species evolved from whatever birds were oh, that oh, owl over thing. there. They're owl children. <laughs> yeah, long, long, long. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, I that is an interesting question because he looks very fuzzy. Um, but ostensibly, I mean, I don't know how spiky hedgehog. He's a buzzsaw. Are. Yeah, well. That's his power. He turns into a freaking buzzsaw. But yeah. yeah, they make him look like a plushie. Yeah. Well, anything going fast enough can be pretty destructive. <laughs> I, you take a piece of silk and you whip it around quick enough, you could cut a pineapple in half. I bet. <laughs> <laughs> That's just science. That's critical I race bet. theory. Um, <laughs> it's it's not. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Wait, do I not understand what that means? <laughs> <laughs> um. I think nobody does. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I was I was looking at the glove, like the two buels at the end of his hands. That yeah. said to me that looked like gloves. Then when you look at knuckles, his it looks like his actual little spiky things are super sharp, but his gloves seem to like sort of have some padding around I, them. I think they look like they're sewn on. Like it looks like yes. they are in fact boxing gloves. And I don't even think mm. those those never at any point demonstrated to me that they might be sharp. They look like two little plush pyramid looking triangle things on the end of it. Well, he does grapple them kind of into the side of the mountain oh, you're to right. catch yes. himself. Yes, okay, you're right. So that and that's a major part of that. That's why he exists in the games. He was. He was basically just Sonic, and they needed him to be able to do something different. They're like, uh, he sticks to the wall now. Okay. Okay. Love that. It didn't Love look that. like that, but I. But you're right. That's, <laughs> that scene did exist. His hands are so weird. I'm like, I'm not really, not that I need to be, but I don't feel very threatened by these weird pillows on your hand. Like, it doesn't feel like, when you think of a guy whose whole skill is to punch and to, I guess, penetrate with his fists. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Which, that's why he teamed up with Eggman. Yeah, he did. Uh, they get a double double team stone. Who, by the way, oh yeah, uh, that stone. I don't know if I mentioned this. The stone at the very beginning, he drinks the juices from. Uh, you know the the stone juice oh, leaks mm-hmm. into his cup, and then he. <laughs> just saying, mm-hmm. Carolyn is not wrong. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, but yeah, I just it it at no point other than them constantly telling me and the fact that he can defeat Sonic at certain things is he nothing about his physical stature. It's so goofy to be like, he is a warrior, well, which I guess it's a kid's movie. So what are you gonna do? But there let's Jordan, I, I wanna... you're still thinking like a human. You gotta, you gotta expand your consciousness. I don't know. We need to do mushrooms or what, but like <laughs> we gotta, we gotta think about this in a different way. You're right. You gotta get like, 10% hornier and about 150% more alien thinking. Exactly. I don't think I want to be either wanna... of those things in a kid's movie <laughs> or theater, but all right. I I <laughs> want to give a shout out to the like character designers. Like what a hellish time they had when they released their first masterpiece and the internet was like, oh, nope. And they yeah. went back to the drawing board and I think they did a good job of making this a cool thing to watch. And then also... They had to they had to create now three characters that were both like cool and fun for kids, but not threatening to them and also held some sort of power. You know, and so they had to make Knuckles' fists like just big fluffy boxing gloves. So but they had to establish that he was still very strong in the fist. So they kept that's why they kept on doing the whole like, oh, you got a strong handshake thing. Like it felt clunky, but what else could they do? They had to make these kids' toys move, you know. <laughs> I <laughs> yeah t- the t- tails tails getting bullied for having two tails and being able to fly because of that and being a genius is tails from a different planet yes tails is from their own planet but sonic and knuckles are from the no, no, same no, no. planet i don't think knuckles and sonic are related at all that's why i brought it up at the beginning where it's like he keeps being like, don't you know my race of echidna? 
uh, has such a problem with the owls. And the owls love you, hedgehog. So that sucks, and why we are now enemies. Like, th- th- there was nothing to suggest that, like, you're a different version of me. They're, like, two different yeah, similarly named races. Although, even still, why would Sonic... Why is he a hedgehog? Like, this doesn't make any... <laughs> That's just the name of his <clears throat> species. <laughs> but they also go out of their way to say, like, tribe. So this is what I'm saying. Okay, mm-hmm. I think millennia ago... Near the formation of the cosmos, right. near the beginning, a life form emerged that then split into three, possibly four, who knows how many different species that then colonized the stars around maybe their local solar system and became so technologically advanced that to us, it seems magic. <laughs> The power of the rings, the power of the stones, the the master emerald or whatever the fuck it's called. Chaos we emerald. Come on. Chaos emerald. Mm-hmm. We can't comprehend this because this is an ancient and venerable species. And maybe one of those species also evolved to look like an owl. <laughs> Just as a side note. Um, Just as a side note. Yeah, uh, correct. Yeah, you know how like everything, you know, like eight different species have have independently evolved to turn into crabs. I you ever see I that? Did not know that. Yeah, that's like an arc. That's a little in joke in the archaeology world. But there's been at different points, <laughs> there's been totally different species that have like turned into just full on what we see as crabs. Um, yeah. So I know that life. It's very similar to. <laughs> What Carolyn just said. See, there you go. Well, okay. But it's playing out on a cosmic scale. Okay, well, real quick. Uh, the echidnas... <laughs> so the echidnas are the ones that forged the nine rings. Uh, not the nine rings, but they're the ones with the chaos emeralds, yeah? <laughs> right? Isn't it only... I don't remember. If I'm not mistaken, there's a scene um, where the echidnas, yeah. all of them, come together to make the chaos emerald. But before they can, like, use it to obliterate too many whatever they're fighting, the owls swoop in like the eagles in Lord of the Rings, and they steal yes. it and hide it on Earth. Underwater. Is this just a better version of Lord of the Rings? Because we all know that the eagles should have just flown them to Mordor in the fucking first place. And in this universe, the Threw owls, over. yeah, they get it done. They actually yeah. they do what they should yeah. have done in the beginning. I don't know. Yeah. That sort of lore stuff sort of slipped pretty quickly past me because they're they're just like, <laughs> it's video game. Just shut up. But I think I just kept getting hung up on like, why are Knuckles and Sonic not friends? And or why are they not more diametrically opposed where he's like, like the, the, the reason he hates Sonic is because he's connected to Longclaw, who he hates not it's also because he lost his family knuckles lost his family in the attack on sonic's family in the attack on longclaw i think so there is they a lost thing, everything yeah. that same day that same event in their life which then again they would be the same age i guess because sonic was mm-hmm. a baby child then knuckles is a baby child then is that same day so this this is also presuming that longclaw killed a ton of the echidnas <laughs> <laughs> uh, the whole tribe. Well, you know, it was worth it. <laughs> I guess. Well, they were uh, they were building a they were building WMDs. You had to preemptively get in there and uh, yeah. take them out. That's right. That's right. No <laughs> one should have the power to eat the chaos emerald and then go full Super Saiyan. <laughs> that is interesting too. Is this idea, or like at the end when Sonic becomes a god? ostensibly he yeah. just then decides not to mm. be god but because he had some more growing up to do <laughs> it's such a funny yeah, thing yes to i'll be god later yeah. <laughs> i'm sure this opportunity will come around again <laughs> what a stupid um i like movie. that he summons a chili dog though but which oh, yeah. they haven't really referenced any other time in the movie like does he they never bring it up that just totally relies on do you do they do it in the first one or no I don't think I don't remember there being a chili dog in the first. I think he does movie. eat a chili dog. Uh, 
during his snack, soapy snack fest, or oh. something like that. It. I was more struck the- by how the CG <laughs> of the chili dog was horrible. It was so not good. Bad looking. <laughs> not it's like good. just shoot a chili dog and then, <laughs> like, model it after that. I don't know why it looks like low res <laughs> Xbox graphics chili dog. Is kind of that's what processed meat looks like on his home planet because <laughs> even the meat different dna etc yeah, yeah. exactly jesse's getting it jesse's the meat, getting the it. wheat i do think the beans i do think that is yeah one of the funniest things is ultimately how terrible the cg looks for the characters themselves like they don't look even remotely grounded in reality so they have yeah. to work around George- just bumping and, and all that stuff jordan was spoiled by howard the duck he wanted all of them to be piloted by children in suits <laughs> Oh my God! I would love that. I do. They they I, they actually shot a version of this movie, but the kids kept getting sick, throwing up because they were spinning them around too fast when they <laughs> were doing this buzz sauce. Yeah, yeah, and they weren't great at punching <laughs> holes in walls or anything like that. They yeah, they broke their hands. They lost seventeen kids on the snowboarding scene. It's just it wasn't worth Chil- it. Children can't can't access their rage the way adults can. <laughs> That's true. So all right, this is the, technically the title of this. Uh, this live stream, but um, so Jim Carrey, <laughs> Jim Carrey, uh, made the first movie for me. I I generally enjoyed watching the first movie because Jim Carrey was so funny in it. Every time he came on screen, yeah. I was like, oh right, this is the guy that I thought was the funniest person in the world in the '90s when I watched like Ace Ventura and all that stuff, Dumb and Dumber. Uh huh. Um, I thought he kind of sucked in this one. I didn't find him very funny at all. Uh, reviewers seem to disagree, but. I don't know. I just didn't think it was that good. And then he said this may be his last movie ever. So maybe he agreed with me. I don't know. Wow. That that can't possibly be true. Actors need to just, I know they're a dramatic bunch (laughs) by definition. That's what I've heard. But like, chill out. Don't, it's like, get, it's like, hey, I'm getting off Twitter for a while. Like, don't tweet (laughs) that. Just leave. (laughs) No one's waiting for you. I think he did do a hiatus or something a few years ago, or maybe it was just that he like came out as a very serious and strange man, you know, like I feel like totally. he's always like, he's pretty dramatic. He, he's yes. like, he always looking to be taken more seriously, but then he goes and is Dr. Robotnik for two movies. <laughs> I like the idea. Hey, I'm sure that's some serious money. I would take that seriously. He, oh, got, sure. I'm sure he got paid a t- fuck ton. It's And now royalties forever? He said. Mm-hmm. Never need to work again, Jim. <laughs> Retire. I mean, it's making a lot of movie already and that's even with pandemic stuff. And people are shuttling their kids to the theater to see this. Um, <laughs> I, think, I think it might be a big publicity stunt. Where he's gonna dramatically return for Sonic Three, it's gonna be amazing. Mm. The, oh. He's leveraging all of his uh, like celebrity capital for Sonic Three for his glorious return. It's like Tom Brady unretiring for yeah. one yeah. last totally. movie, one last job. It's Sonic Three, like the return of or Robotnik. Doc, you know what it is? Is Doctor Kintobor is Jim Carrey's Deadpool. The way Ryan Reynolds is like, I will do Deadpool my way one day. This is Jim Carrey. He did the mm. first two movies where it's Robotnik, but he really wants to get Kintobor into the movie. We're going to get some mm-hmm. leaked test footage of him just crushing it as uh, Kintobor <laughs> or whatever. It's some like random <laughs> clip, and we're going to be like, oh, man, we're going to have to get that greenlit. We're going to start a you know, change.org petition. It's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be amazing. I never blame the actors in movies. Like, it's never the actor's fault, I think. I- unless what? you're hate- unless that actor is Hayden Christensen. And then get the <laughs> fuck off my Star Wars, sir or ma'am, please. But it's never the actor's fault. Like, there's so much that goes into making these films, the writing. Who knows? There may be takes that we have never seen there may be a whole butthole cut that we'll never get our eyes on a piss cut but we can draw pictures but we can draw it. pictures so i think jim carrey did a good job he's also so much of this acting he was like totally alone on like a yeah, green screen mm-hmm. and he's also hiding behind the glasses and the big mustache and stuff and the prosthetic dick too 
bet you didn't notice that. <laughs> I did not notice that. I missed that. I can't believe I did. What? That's worth a rewatch. No, it's not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just saw something. But, recently. Just thinking of things that make it harder. <laughs> He, yep. So I think he did. I think he did a good job. But like, just like Sonic's one-liners are nonsense, so too was so much of his dialogue. It was just like either so trite and just like, oh, you like you just stole like a quote from a different movie. <laughs> just made no sense. There's no like emotional thrust. But I love the character of like so brilliant that he's just evil like driven mad by your own brilliance and in the first movie they did such a good job of just making him this untouchable asshole who's so like deeply self-conscious too that he has to put everyone else down i just i just love it i relate to that well, right that's so that's <laughs> what i'm saying though is in the first one he had something that i thought mm-hmm. was he had his his gay romance he had his um like his issues with authority and like anybody thinking that he sucked um, and all that stuff. And his, I, like it was a very clear like quest for power to get Sonic's whatever. And in this one, it's just even the deal with Knuckles, it's kind of confusing. <laughs> like it's, yes. it's never a hundred percent clear. I mean, I know it, what they're getting at. Knuckles just wants to find it. And Jim Carrey is like, I just want to help you because my only goal is to kill Sonic, I guess. And Knuckles is like, I mean, that makes sense, I guess. Why Why <laughs> wouldn't you want to kill this this blue child? child? <laughs> um, but it's it just the little things, like him flossing again, it's just so... Ooh, that was, cr- that was rough. Just, that was cringe, as the kids say. I just, I just feel like... I, I think nobody should ever dance, either in a movie or real life. Dancing is cringe. I agree. Um... <laughs> about that but i just mean even like it, it, that's a joke from the first movie it seems like they could have upped it he's like i used to floss but now i'm into whatever the new cool Fortnite emote is <laughs> totally um, whatever the new stolen Fortnite emote dance <laughs> right. is. uh anyway i don't know i was bummed by it if he goes out on this it's gonna be kind of depressing um <laughs> Oh, don't, Jordan, you look so sad. Don't worry. He looks a lot like my dad, so I feel a very good connection to him. (laughs) My dad looks like Larry David, so I just watch Curb and get depressed in that way. There's seven million episodes of that show, so you'll be fine. Yeah. I think that Jim Carrey will be back for sure. I I wouldn't worry about that. I also think that it was the big weak point of this movie was that there was more there were too many plots oh yeah there was the whole wedding subtext wedding arc that they didn't need at mm-hmm. all james marsden <clears throat> still didn't have an opinion about finding <laughs> an alien oh here's a, also i just need to point this out this is a major incongruity between the first movie and the second movie. In the first movie, they clearly show Sonic getting wet and shaking himself very quickly to dry off. And he's puffy, he puffs out. In this movie, he falls in the lake, in the boat, just so they can establish for later that he doesn't like water, which is not true because we see him in the bath, which is, again, weird because he's a child. A thing that he claims to but, never do, but has clearly yeah, done. He, Yes, he get he gets dunked in the water, comes back out, is shown freezing and shivering. Oh yeah. When he can just dry himself off. <laughs> I thought that was a real lazy writing. So Sonic mm-hmm. producers get it. I'm a I'm a writer. I'll write just <laughs> screenplay for Sonic 3. I'll win Jim Carrey an Oscar. I'll win Ben Schwartz an Oscar. I do think you want best picture and best animated feature and best live action? Call me. Carolyn Page. I my number is nine seven zero. Oh, it's like oh no. Um, I will say that just as a as a general thought, it does surprise me that it's not more often. I'm assuming that a comedian is just hired to just write the one liners or whatever. It seems like they could always be better because there are a lot of people that write jokes in the world. Yeah, and they have to go through all the effort of animating them. So it just feels like could be better. Should be better. You'd think you'd think Ben Schwartz would have been given more latitude to make some quips, but it doesn't 
I don't think that he well, did. Well, did you see? Yes. One episodes. of the world's most famous improvisers. Nah, we'll just write these lines for him. Well, did you see? <laughs> he does. Uh, doesn't he sing the worst or whatever that the the like riff yes. from Parks and Rec? Mm-hmm. Yes. I was like, oh, that's like fun. That. That's a good for point. Me and nobody else in this theater, clearly. Uh, hey, kids, <laughs> let me explain this to you. Um, <laughs> You want late 2000 sitcoms? You guys know about that? That's the thing, right? It's good. It's just the, Don't watch the first season, but season two, it gets real good. <laughs> yeah. I brought the DVDs. I'm going to need them back, but you could borrow them. What's a DVD? Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> anyway, it's just weird to have such dated references to, like, again, the, the freaking uh, downtown. What was the name of that song? Funk? funk is that it yeah oh uptown uptown funk, funk. Oh, up. that's right downtown <laughs> funk is much easier they really should have made them We're... dance to wop like <laughs> yeah. something a little more current <laughs> what would they how would they um what's like the kids bop version of of wop like how would they make that appropriate for this movie like wet as pasta or something no no he's a, he's a wet ass possum but they can't say ass. He's, a, he's wet as a possum, oh. but though he is a hedgehog, a he's very similar in wetness to a similar mm-hmm. rodent type creature. All right, mm-hmm. we're gonna we're gonna transition. You guys got any other uh, final things that you wanted to hit before we look at what is ultimately like no? Anyway, what do you got? I I, I enjoyed the uh, the homages to the actual gameplay. Like I said, with like Knuckles being able to latch on to cliffs and stuff, and the way he could fly, but only in a slightly downward mm. uh, direction. But that was really cool. Um, the like some of the some of the settings, like the whole temple thing, was very much a Sonic level. And they had Sonic get in there by falling down this like water chute and stuff. Um, like sucks up the air bubble. This was all pretty, probably a little bit ham-fisted, but I liked seeing it because because I knew that these the people who made the movie had played the games and were at least for brief moments they were trying to uh, pander to me instead of the kids <laughs> in the theater. Yeah, that was I nice. <laughs> <laughs> I think this this movie this is more uh, about the larger film industry in general. I think or the way that we're making movies now. These movies made me realize that movies have come full circle in a way in that be- the post credit scene and pretty much any big like franchise blockbuster, you know there's going to be a post credit scene now, right? It's just become de rigueur. So it's become so, we've gone full circle. Like in the 50s, early days of film, you'd get all the credits right at the beginning. Mm. And I think we just need to go back to that maybe for like pacing I don't know because every movie like there's so many false endings and like I want to leave on like a moment but we can't do that because there's credits and then there's like oh it's over and oh it's not over oh the shadow's coming oh government made it Ooh. <laughs> yeah I, I I feel like also shadow nobody likes shadow right the, I, I have no affinity for shadow that's feels to me like a weak premise to hang the the third part of your trilogy on but i mean i'm in who likes anything i'm, I'm pre-ordering <laughs> tickets right now i feel like the uh the thing that i'm surprised hasn't happened yet carolyn to your point is mm-hmm. i'm surprised we still have credits at all because <clears throat> if they cut the 10 minutes of credits you could fit another mm-hmm. runtime in and ultimately you feel like that is the thing mm-hmm. that people would care about and by people i mean the people making the movies and selling the movies and showing the movies is mm-hmm. you know one of the reasons that you know, movies are shorter or longer tends to some of the argument becomes, well, if it's only 90 minutes, we can do two showings for the, you know, for the case of one Batman. Um, And it seems like at some point that's going to be cut or it's going to go twice as fast. It's weird. It should just be a QR code like (laughs) menus now. That actually is a great idea, but it's just like, it's weird that they want everybody to sit in the theater way longer than they need to to give them a piece of content. I mean, I think it's ultimately because they know that 80% of the people are going to leave and they're going to go to YouTube and it'll just like keep that like internet engine moving probably, but (laughs) something like that. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're right that they're already starting to do that in that like streaming services just automatically (laughs) have that skip credits button. And, but I know that people that Mm. make films or aspiring filmmakers absolutely hate that. And you know, like there are people 
people that care about the craft of filmmaking will sit in the theater specifically to watch the credits, whether or not there's an end, you know, a post credit scene. So I hope that it doesn't go in that direction, but I think you're right. Marketing wise, it makes sense. And like probably in our lifetimes, (laughs) <laughs> but every I think it's part of the art. It's like we everyone when I saw Sonic, which was at 1 p.m. showing in the middle of the day on like a Thursday at the Americana at Brand, the best place on earth, <laughs> everybody clapped. There was like a <laughs> solid like 60 seconds of roarous applause. It was fun. Wow. I, I liked it. Uh, Sonic 2 or the or Sonic 2. Uh, wow. Cool. Yeah. Uh the four girls did not applause in mine. I, I will say though. <laughs> What I was thinking, Jesse, is that's not necessarily true of any other media you consume. Like, you don't get a whole song on an album that's like, Jeff's on the bass. Uh, you know, like, it's not it's not usually baked in to the thing in a way that is ever, like, forcibly you're, you must ingest this part of it if you want to get to the, I don't know, like, the best guitar solo is after... Uh, everybody's like, and Jeff, he played bass, and uh, Charles, he he got everybody sandwiches, and you know, by the way, That's, no, yeah, I guess, so, were but harmed it's, and... <clears throat> but there's also fewer people, I think, that are making an album. Like, do you want like Anthony Akitas to stop before like the big guitar solo and be like, hold on, I just want to give a shout out to Rick Rubin. He really worked no, hard. No, I don't want one. any of it anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I would I'm imagine there's also for more. just like oh, okay. <laughs> I would imagine there's also like legally they must like there's I union yeah. rules. Yeah, there is. You know, I'm just saying. But I think we should get rid of unions. <laughs> That's a joke. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sonic Three should be uh, all about Shadow busting a union, or no, starting a union, and then Sonic defeats him. Yeah, <laughs> Sonic the Scab. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta go, bust the union. Um. <laughs> Uh, okay, so let's let's hit these these few observations that that Brian found for us. Greg says Jordan having to watch all the Sonic multiverse movies back to back in ten years is gonna suck. That's true. <laughs> uh, Blaze Martin says, "Oh wait, there there is already a spinoff in development centered around Knuckles, Knuckles yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Teacher oh, Selba just can't get any parts anymore. I guess they they truly <laughs> must be paying so much." Or yeah, they all have for sure you know, so many children that we don't know about that they are trying to please. <laughs> um, it's true too. Blaze says that Sonic and Eggman should make out and have babies. That's really good. Um, yeah. XJ X boy said thought Tails was hot. How about you guys? Nope, it's a child. Um, <laughs> yeah, not hot. Eyes, the cops will be at your but house in five think- minutes. <laughs> I did think that Tails was coded as female in the beginning because they made their like chest fur look like breasts, which I also appreciated that they put full titties on the owl on long claws design. They like gave her breasts. Owls don't have breasts. Just because don't it's a female they? doesn't need. Well, they do eggs. We don't know what's to have we don't breasts. know what's going on under all those feathers. You ever see owl legs? How crazy they look! Imagine yes. what their boobs look like. <laughs> we don't they don't look like well, we don't have to imagine anymore we have an entire film series dedicated <laughs> to exploring this um so anyway omni omnicron says that for better or worse will these movies be the new threshold video game movies use going like is this going to be the prototypical video game movie uh template moving forward i'd prefer i'd prefer this to like ready player one where it's just like it's not really a i mean it's not, but I, but it's it's a it's an amalgam of like Easter eggs in a million different video games, which I thought was lazy and pandering. And I'm glad that at least they, I don't know, I prefer this to that. Is this going to be better than the Mario movie that's coming out? Ooh. Wait, is there Mario? Yeah, yeah with Chris. Yeah, with think Chris, about oh, that. Chris Pratt, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Famous Italian. The famous Italian yeah. actor Chris Pratt. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and it's animated, so it's not like they couldn't have gotten the original voice actor, right? Um, I don't know. I mean, it's it's tough to say because I think you could make the same argument that Detective Pikachu helped lay this groundwork as well, which is like it's a kid's movie. It's a hybrid. It's it's in the universe, but it has nothing to do with any established plot necessarily. I mean, I guess there is a game, a Detective Pikachu game that I'm not super familiar with. Um, I do think it makes sense ultimately why wouldn't video game movies be more targeted towards 
kids. Like, it just depends on the franchise. Like the assass- like you mentioned the Assassin's Creed game uh, movie earlier, which is the Assassin's Creed, the actual lore, I'm not going to get into it right now, but it's awesome and vast right. and does also have to do with aliens. I guess that's the thing, though, is that the people that you want to go see this movie are never going to be happy. It doesn't feel like. It's just going to be hard to... I feel like a lot of these that get uh, converted tend to be sci-fi, right? It's like Last of Us, it's Halo, mm-hmm. it's Assassin's mm-hmm. Creed. And I feel like, I don't know, the budgets just get really high. It just doesn't... I don't think people are dying to see hardcore, serious sci-fi like video game movies. I don't know. Where as opposed to Sonic, where again it's like I don't know anything about Sonic, I don't know anything about dapping, but look at the look, it's cute and it goes. Wow, wow, wow. It just feels like, <laughs> or like Pikachu's the same thing, where it's like, well, it's got a funny little voice, he looks cute. I don't know, it just feels like. I guess how much did Uncharted make? Did that did that succeed? Oh, is that even out yet? <laughs> yes. I think I think saying even even the looking at it like is this the new standard for video game movies like no it's just meeting a current standard for kids movies right. which is nothing like there is I can say nothing new or innovative about the Sonic series like we're not we're not reinventing the wheel at all we're just using things market research stuff that we know works yeah I would agree with that um, to make the best movie of the year. Yeah, I don't think we've cracked. It's going to take... So Uncharted made almost $400 million, which is pretty good. Um, but I think it's going to take... Yeah, like The Last of Us is going to have to crush. Like we, I, don't, I still don't think we've gotten a serious video game movie that's made better by being associated with video games. I, I guess that's the thing, too, is like even if The Last of Us does well... It might just be because people like zombie movies or whatever. I don't know. It'll. But that's a series. Oh, you're right. Though, that's right? A, that's on HBO. But like Uncharted, I think a lot of people that watch that don't know freaking anything about Uncharted. <clears throat> like that connection is not necessarily. I don't know. It'd be interesting to explore. Um, <laughs> now I'm thinking of Prince of Persia, which they've got a new Prince of Persia game coming out, and I've never seen the movie, but Jake Gyllenhaal playing the titular Prince of Persia. <laughs> That's true. They've also made it's a lot funny. of uh, <laughs> shooting themselves in the foot with just really bad ideas. Anyway, <laughs> um, also, fun fact, according to this list, Sonic is 3'3 three, three and 77 pounds, if that was something. 77 pounds. You wanted to know. Hmm. So he is essentially like a piece of silk cutting up pineapple um, <laughs> when he yeah. blows up a tank or whatever he does. Um, I just want to hold his arms and feel what his squishiness is. You know what I mean? I bet it. it's probably like it feels like those old toys, action figures, whatever, that are like rubber with some some bendable metal going through it. Yeah. I bet that's what they feel like. Yeah, that's what I think he feels like. Um, also, Brian asks, <laughs> I'm just going to keep going. Uh, Brian was asking, <laughs> is this just like, are the gloves just how all art cartoons have to be animated for some reason? Because it's also Mickey Mouse. It's also Bugs Bunny. It's like most mm-hmm. animated things, at least older ones, and now apparently newer ones have gloves for some reason. The answer is, I don't know. Um, Ooh, hands are hard I, to draw. There were a couple of, of quick frames in the old Sonic animated series, like PSAs, where they show he like takes off his gloves and he has this gross human thumb. He stubs his toe and a gross human toe emerges from his shoe um so yeah he's got pink human skin under Ew. there Ooh, i hate that i actually mm-hmm. wonder do you think they always had this design for sonic but they made a they made a horror design for sonic to make it go viral because that's that's how the internet works now is you got to make people mad and then it builds up a thing <laughs> and then you can be like oh i fixed it like IHOP becoming no. IHOP, and you think that was, they were like, this is sick, and then people got mad? Yeah, I think okay. it was, they did a ton of work and made a crazy character design, and then the internet actually did something good for once and was like, we will not stand for this. <laughs> I wonder, but like, to the points that we've been making, how many of those 45-year-old angry dudes are in the theater right now, now that the design matches their preferred aesthetic? Like, they're not, they didn't care. <laughs> That's a really good like point. Like, the eight-year-old is like, oh, I think the teeth are too uh, human. I'm actually going to walk out of the theater. 
Like, I... <laughs> but I think even the eight year olds would not have been as taken with the like the current Sonic now is adorable, so cute, Big much more fuckable eyes. than the original. <laughs> much more fuckable than the original and the original is super scary that's true it is true but the animators did such a good job like i can't imagine how many long nights they must have pulled and, and i mean yeah the first the, one. And, yeah anime and being an animator is notoriously like just taxing like they just mm. work you to the goddamn bone both in like cg film animation and also video game animation which this is obviously a crossover of both so i bet it made a lot of people very miserable for a long time here's hoping um <laughs> we actually had a um God, i don't remember if he pitched it or not but um there was a guy mike amory i think who used to do a lot of stuff with hard drive and he got mad at me because our wires crossed anyway we pitched something but he didn't know that we were pitching this <laughs> to uh mick sweeney's talking about um trying to rewrite the odyssey but as uh, a video, the guy having to redesign Sonic, um, just like <laughs> all of the the that's hilarious. Yeah, and then he got mad, and which is totally fair. And I was like, oh, actually, don't look at it. Don't look at our pitch. It's 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 not of me. I'm sorry. So I'm sorry, Mike. Uh, nothing came of it. Nothing was happy. We all lost. All right, let's do titles. Um, so uh, I'll do. Two that I have, and then we can work through. Brian has not put any alts in yet, so there may just not be any. But uh, I have Gotta Go Gay um, <laughs> as one, and the other is an exploration into animal teats. Um, Love that. Because of, of tails, because of long claw, just yeah. uh, the mm -hmm. age of animals, uh, of all these mammals. Although owls are not mammals but the other mammals they're all echidnas they should all be on their sucking something on their planet maybe they are that's true wow see yeah again we're thinking too too similar to our own species that's true it's just a parallel evolution you know um yeah so maybe it's just owls have teats now the movie um but um, <laughs> go ahead jesse you got any for us yeah i got a. Uh... Chaos in the Emerald. <laughs> Stupid. Uh, got Radical Race Theory. Oh. And then... Uh, yeah, oh, because we'll just... he goes fast. Right. I get he, oh, yeah, I mean, he's very radical. Our SEO radical. might be insane just... if we use that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then uh, we'll say Robotnik and Stone's Infinite Playlist. Oh. <laughs> he pitches this every time. It's not cute. It's cute this time. <laughs> um, Carolyn, do you have any alts for us? Okay, the Eggman cometh. Nice. Because he jizzes, presumably, in Dr. Stone. <laughs> Doc Cock. Oh, my goodness. Because he jizzes, presumably, in Agent Stone. And then romancing the stone. That's so good. I'm here for Eggman and Stone and Eggman and Stone only. What about the I want a full spin-off. I'm gonna you know what? After this, I'm gonna write some fan fiction. Look what for about it. the uh, the egg in the stone? Um if we're gonna go that round. Oh that's good. That's good. The egg in Yeah, I like that. <laughs> I don't oh, I should <laughs> I should also mention that canonically he is he is egg shaped because uh when that rogue oh, yeah. wave comes and messes with the chaos emerald he happens to be holding uh, a hard boiled egg that he brought for lunch that day and so that's why he's eggman yeah oh. that's never <laughs> i love that is it addressed is it just because he's bald in these movies well he's he is fat and egg shaped which is why jim carrey was like a weird choice to begin with well, but i but... mean in the movie there are many characters that call him eggman is there a... Oh, I think it's because his robots look like eggs. Uh, he does that's have a lot what of egg I thought, stuff. and he's like, "These are my egg." So thoughts. he was like this close to being like sperm man or like fallopian tube man or something. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Dodge to bullet. Both also have to do with eggs. Um. Mm-hmm. They they could have called him Spider Man because he has so many eggs, like a spider. <laughs> but Spider Man was already taken. Uh. <laughs> Should've should have called him Blank Man. Oh my god, that'd be so bad. <laughs> uh, Bren pitches the title but a ding, but you have to make the sounds. But a ding. Which I guess is <laughs> <But -a> ding. <laughs> two. Um, <laughs> great. Well, 
that was wait what about the, the sound of sonic drowning how's that go isn't it just like <laughs> <laughs> i so, thought that they were gonna do a whole water level when they went to the temple like it was an underwater level. I thought that they didn't do that. I actually, they didn't. Well, but they they just had him drown. But yeah, they didn't do the full level. I thought him yeah. that's stressful. Him running on the water was my favorite, <laughs> like visual scene, um, of which there were many mm. contenders. However, that one edged them out. <laughs> um, yeah, very very Christ like. It's also a little bit lazy that he falls into the ocean and then just accidentally wakes up on the island he was trying to run to anyway. Sure. I'm not gonna get picky about it, but that wasn't Jesus. That I mean, he was out there, but the guy that walked and then and then drowned was not Jesus. Um, right. So just for our our viewers <laughs> think that we're being sacrilegious, we're not. Um, you know our stuff. I am. I'm being sacrilegious. I may still be ordained. I don't know. Um, oh. I have Give it a have, give it a I try. Checked. See if you still got it. Yeah. I'm possessed, so you can try and give me a Skype. Uh... What Ex is it? Depossessing exorcism. Depossessing. De um, <laughs> cool. All right. Well, if we got nothing else, uh, if we ever had anything at all, let's um, mm -mm. let's just uh, let's wrap this up. Jesse, where can we find you? Um, I think it's worth going and checking out the episode of Cannonball on Sonic the Hedgehog over at youtubecom slash cracked. An excellent destination for all of your pop culture and other interesting needs. Just any need, we cover it. <laughs> uh carolyn where can we find you oh you can also find me writing for cracked you can follow me on twitter and all social media at jacuzzi tubs with two b's and every wednesday i host a competitive fuck mary kill game show on the you jokes youtube channel that is a real it's a real fun time excellent and uh you can find me on twitter at the underscore j underscore breeding and also remember we are going to be live streaming every monday at 1 p.m so come back uh, at other times, Eastern specifically, and subscribe to us on YouTube. But we've also we're doing audio only versions of this on podcasts or on Apple Podcasts, Spotify. We also are a newsletter, Crack Movie Club, which you can sign up for at crack.com slash movie club. And next week we are doing everything everywhere all at once. Uh Allie returns. So Ooh. it's a good movie. A good movie next yeah, week. Sorry you missed it. <laughs> I never I never played the game, so I don't. I might have missed some stuff, but I thought it was good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, uh, there's a lot to explore in the origins of, yeah, whether they all have teats or not. Um, hopefully, they'll cover that in the sequel. All right, that's it. We're gonna end on that weird note. Goodbye.